Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to continue from our financial instrument measurement with a focus on fair value through OCI financial instrument. All right. So I have a number of bonds that we want to measure using the fair value through OCI measurement approach. So we can see the list of bonds, which are data from our respective accounting systems. Like you have the bond name, the dates issued, the date your company purchased the bond, the date price on purchase, the date the bond will mature, the first value of the bond, the amount paid as investment when buying the bond, and of course, as at the measurement date, what the current amount or amortized cost is. So let's look at some IFRS 9 literature, right? We've mentioned that financial instruments are measured at amortized cost, fair value through PL, and fair value through OCI. So before we go in details what the fair value through OCI is, let's define what is a fair value in the first instance. Fair value is defined as the price that would be received to sell an asset or paid to transfer liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. So that's our definition of what a fair value is. Then breaking it down to see what fair value OCI means is that for a debt to be recognized at fair value through OCI, that debt is measured at fair value only if it meets both of the following conditions. The first condition is that the asset is held within a business model whose objective is achieved by both collecting contractual cash flows and selling the assets. All right, you can see where the fair value is coming in. The second condition to meet is that the contractual terms of the financial asset meets the SPPI criteria. And SPPI means solely payment of principal and interest. All right, so that instrument to your head based on your business model must meet also that criteria as well. Interest income is calculated using the effective interest rates method, and this is recognized in PL. Then any gain or loss that arises as a result of your fair value measurement is recognized in OCI, other comprehensive income, except for impairment gains or losses. So just like your amortized cost instrument, your fair value through OCI instrument as well is assessed for ECL impairment. All right. So now that we've had uh, a bit of background around the IFRS 9 literature for fair value true OCI instruments, let's then go into how this plays out in reality. So your company has invested in this number of instrument, bond instruments, and uh, as at the measurement that you have your amortized cost. So if you want to see how the amortized cost is being calculated, I would like you to refer or encourage you to look at my initial video, which I did on how to calculate amortized cost for bond instruments. On the fair value side, we've defined it to be the price that will be paid or received to transfer an asset or liability between two market participants at the measurement date. So for that to happen, they need to be an active market. So for these bonds, we have an active market where these bonds are traded, where buyers and sellers need to pay or receive cash to transfer asset or liability as the case may be. So in this situation, our market is the FMDQ where these bonds are traded. So I have marked up uh, this bond's maturity. The bond maturing on the 26th of April, 2029, 23rd of July, 2030, and 18th of July, 2034. So if you look at this maturity and now bond data, you will see that we have bond data maturing in April, 2029, July of 2030, July of 2034, all right? And in this data, because this is the active market for where this bond is being traded, we can easily pick out what's the coupon rate, what is the yield, and what is the price, the closing price as at the valuation date. So, so our valuation date is on the 13th of January, 2022. All right, so we want to find what the market value or fair value of this bond is as at this date, given uh, this bond information from the market. I have extracted all of this information like the coupon rates, I've extracted the yield 12.50 and I've extracted the closing price, which is our claim price in the market and I have copied those information in here. All right. Like you can see for the bond maturing on 26th of April, 2029, the coupon rate is 14.55. 14.55. 14 
14.55 then we have the yield of 12.5 12.50 and then we have our price the bond price which is the clean price as at the valuation date of 109.57 okay you can see we have the 109.57 all right so all of this information is gotten from the market source which is fmtq for example so you may want to know how this bond price is calculated you can easily do that because you already have the yield on the bond as at the valuation date or measurement date so with that you can use to recalculate what this price that is being displayed on fndq is from recalculating it to do that we're going to use the excel formula the excel price formula to do this for us and we've defined what these parameters to pick is right so that would be my first step to check in the price to be sure that what we have matches what is being displayed in the market given the yield as at the valuation date i'll come here and say equals to price all right settlement date is the valuation date or the reporting date for your measurement which is the 13th of january 2022 i'll take this and freeze it f4 make it a absolute cell reference because i'll be needing it for the rest of the color comma my maturity date, like we know, is on the 18th of July, 2034. My rate is my coupon rate of 12.15%. Select it. Comma. My yield is a 12.45% obtained from FMDQ, which is the market or active market for this bond. Comma. My redemption value is the power value of 100. Type in 100. Comma. Then the coupon frequency payment is two, which is semi-annually, comma. Then I will choose actual, actual basis, okay, which is one. And I'll close my bracket. You can see that for the price that was obtained from FMDQ of 98.11 for a bond maturing on the 18th of July, 2034, we have simply recalculated this price based on the parameters of valuation date, which is the reporting date, the maturity date, coupon date, yield on valuation date, the power value, frequency, and the actual for basics. So I can easily drag down. I can see that my price check of the clean price that has been displayed in FMDQ has been uh, recalculated and that agrees to what is being displayed. All right, so this is 98.11, 98.11. It says 109.57, we have 109.56, a marginal difference, all right? So this gives us the price, which is a clean price that we we'll use to run our fair value calculation. So next, let's calculate the rest of the fair value and mark to market calculation for our bond, which then takes us to the next step, which is step two. So step two says we need to calculate what is the last coupon date. All right, so we have the Excel formula to help us do that. The last coupon date, we need to type in the COOP PCD formula. So say equals to COUP PCD, all right, open my bracket. So the settlement date again is our valuation date, which is the 13th of January, 2022, right? I'm gonna freeze this as well because I'll be needing for the rest of my columns, comma, the maturity date of the bond is on the 18th of July, 2034, my coupon payment frequency semi-annual, which is two, comma, choose the actual over actual, and close my bracket. All right, so I can see that my last coupon date was on the 18th of July, 2021. That's the last time coupon was paid on this bond, so I can drag down for the rest of the bonds. So on my next coupon date, which takes me to step three. So I'm going to use the next coupon date formula, which is equals to COUP NCD. Settlement date is the date of valuation, which is the 13th of January, 2022, comma. My maturity date, before that, I'm going to phrase this as well, because I'll be needing for the rest of the color. Comma, maturity date of 18th of July, 2034. Coupon frequency payment, it's semi-annually, which is two. 
comma and then take the actual or actual close my bracket so you can see that the next coupon payment date is on the 18th of january 2022 this shows the semi-annual coupon frequency payment of 18th of july 2021 then the next coupon was on the 18th of january 2022 so i can drag down for the rest of the bonds awesome so the next thing to calculate which is on step four is the outstanding coupon days all right the outstanding coupon days to do that i'm going to use uh the outstanding coupon days from line excel which is equals to coupon cop day bs all right settlement date is the date of valuation which is 13th of january 2022 raise it come on Maturity date of 18th of July 2024. Frequency of semi annual for payment. Comma. Then actual over actual. Then I'll close my brackets. So I have 179 days coupon outstanding. Then I'll drag down. This coupon outstanding days is used to help us calculate our accrued interest, which is the next step in step five. So to make it easier, I have written out the formula to use to calculate the accrued interest, which is in step 5 above. To do that, I'm going to say equals to my, with my bracket. My face value for this bond is 50 million multiplied by my coupon rate of 12.15% multiplied by open my bracket. So I will choose the next coupon date which is the 18th of January 2022 less the last coupon date of 18th of July 2021 close my bracket divided by 365 close my bracket then multiply it by the days outstanding for our coupons which is the 179 right then divided by open my bracket again the next coupon date of 18th of January 2022 less the last coupon date of 18th of July 2021 all right now close my bracket press the enter key so I have my accrued interest calculated for this bond which is 3 million then I'll drag down for the rest all right so the next thing to do is to calculate the fair value based on the clean price so that will be our face value of 50 million right divided by the power value of 100 then multiply by the clean price so we can use the clean price from fmdq which is the active market which we have also uh since check and that makes sense to us take the 98.11 as the price you know press the enter key so you can see that the clean price fair value is 49 million for this bond and i can drop down for the rest all right so this is the fair value based on the clean price and the total fair value is simply the fair value based on the clean price plus the accrued interest all right gives us our total fair value which is this amount plus this amount then we can drag down so our total fair value is 422 million whereas our amortized cost carrying amount is 420 million all right so the difference between the fair value amount and the amortized cost amount or carrying amount is your mark to market gain loss so we're going to compare these two numbers to see where we're having a gain or where we're having a loss all right so i'll say equals to the fair value total fair value less the carrying amount of 52 million and i'll drop down so you can see for the first bond we have a gain of 367,000 followed by a gain of 72,000 and the other bond has a loss of 41,000 then another gain of 410,000 and 368,000 so it's also gain of 1.8 million so you can see that for a bond carrying amount of 420 million there is a gain of 1.8 million on that bond based on our fair value calculation so how do you then account for this on your general ledger? So to account for this is simply to increase the value of the investment by 1.8 million, all right? 
then according to the standard of IFRS 9, the gain or loss for this gain they need to go to OCI as against going to your PL, right? So you debited assets increase the value to fair value amount of 42 million and the uh, gain goes to OCI, all right? So this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video. Bye.